वेलकम टू द नाचा हीलिंग शो कीप इट नाचा वी आर नाचा हीलिंग शो हेलो यू आर लिसनिंग टू द नेचुरल हीलिंग शो फॉर यूके हेल्थ रेडियो आई एम योर होस्ट कैथरीन किरिगन medical intuitive feeler amazon number 1 best selling author you can find out more about me and my work at katherinekirigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com while you're there definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can discover how to heal yourself naturally now our guest today is wendy laidlaw when we wendy laidlaw is the author of how i ended my endometriosis naturally without painkillers drugs or surgery you can find out more about wendy laidlaw and her wonderful work at her website healendometriosisnaturally.com welcome wendy laidlaw thank you catherine it's great to be here so wendy laidlaw what exactly is endometriosis what a great question well endometriosis is uh when the in the the lining of the uterus is when the lining of the uterus somehow migrates and finds itself in the abdominal cavity of a woman and of course when it's in the abdominal cavity and it it bleeds it sheds and bleeds inside there there's no escape normally inside a, a uterus when the lining uh, you know sheds and bleeds it has an escape of course when it's endometriosis you know there's various theories as to how and why it gets there uh, whether it goes back up the fallopian tubes or whatever for whatever reason it's kind of irrelevant at this this point to for diagnosis if there's endometrial deposits over the abdominal wall or intestines or ovaries or fallopian tubes then it's classed as endometriosis and it causes the most excruciating debilitating pain for decades for for women and cysts fibroids the whole shebang So Wendy Laidlaw what are the primary causes of endometriosis Well again there's a lot of theories out there I guess you know as of like what why would the inside of the lining of a uterus migrate and find its way outside of that There's a lot of kind of uh, perhaps new age kind of feelings about it is it because the wandering womb it goes back to aristotle and uh, all these kind of things or is it just you know again retrograde menstruation that, that deposits and finds itself in the abdominal cavity and other areas of the body even being found in the lungs and things like that as well but kind of uh, you know why is the immune system not mopping up these displaced endometrial tissues so you know we don't really know whether it's hereditary I mean, my mother had it and um my daughter looked like she was going to have signs of having it but because obviously we've learned about how to put it into remission she's able to take the tools and the information now and um and again you know understand like what i refer to as the five p's five poisons of what could actually exacerbate or increase the potential for endometriosis in a woman so you just mentioned there's five p's or five po- poisons that could mm. possibly be causes of endometriosis what yeah. are the five p's that in your experience cause endometriosis well again if you look at, go back to the bare basics of our body our body has this amazing have all these amazing systems like you know digestive systems and immune systems and nervous systems and of course our body is always designed to regenerate and repair and heal itself so if that's not happening then why so i concluded that it was put five poisons or five p's the first p being produce or food you know there's so many toxic foods out there nowadays there's so many e numbers and preservatives and uh, crops being sprayed in fact i heard a stat the other day that something like 80 million bird species have lost been since the 1980s i mean it just just makes you kind of like feel quite ill for nature so our our bodies are being bombarded every day and of course a lot of the time we're not even aware of what comes into our body so that's the first p and what i found with women with endometriosis is actually wheat uh, on its own wheat flour can be one of the most inflammatory and irritable food sources so sometimes i'd say about 80% of women if they read my book and they just swap wheat out in their foods they actually can get you know almost a remission you know reduction in pain pretty quickly and that's amazing and I- I'm going to interject. One of the things that we know 
it from scientists that is that in Western society, that the way wheat is harvested, it is, mm-hmm. gets sprayed with Roundup, also known as glyphosate, which yeah. is a known neurotoxin. So if you're listening to this broadcast, you may say, well, you know, my doctors tested me and I'm not allergic to wheat. You Mm -hmm. may not be allergic to wheat, but everyone reacts to glyphosate, which Mm -hmm. is, again, it's a known carcinogen. So, and wheat is a primary pro-inflammatory food. And in my work as a medical intuitive healer, I often look at, you know, what are the dietary causes Yes. And every food that causes inflammation is going to c- cause some disease of itis, whether it's arthritis, endomitis, any kind of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So, all right. So the first P of your five. Well, it's, it's great that you know that because that's the thing. And a lot of people don't, they aren't aware. And of course, wheat flour is in everything, even in sausages and ice cream for crying out loud. So, so the first P is produce. And I, you know, and obviously there's things like soy and dairy and sugar and things that like we know all that, but that can be overwhelming for women. If you kind of say, swap everything out that you're eating. <laughs> so we just start even with wheat. If you just swap out wheat for even gluten-free, wheat-free stuff, that can make quite a significant difference for the intestinal tract, reduce inflammation and support the, um, you know, the immune system to do what it wants to do, which is to mop these things up and clear up. The second one is is uh, is products, things you put on your hair and your nails and your skin and all that stuff. Again, full of parabens and SLSs, all these toxins and chemicals, perfumes, uh, essential oils, all these things that just add. It's kind of like the layer upon layer, the last straw that breaks the camel's back. All these things start to compound. And then there's things and, like... And again, I'm going to interject one of the things that we know from natural healing is that your skin is actually your largest organ. Yeah. And so you never really think, I mean, a lot of us think about what do I put in my mouth, but mm. you don't realize that your skin is absorbing absolutely everything that you put on it. And absolutely. When, you're, when you're talking about toxic chemicals, all toxic chemicals, such as in conventional perfumes and makeup products, are going to disrupt your endocrine system and disrupt your hormonal balance. Okay. And even things like washing powder is one of the one of the the most toxic. It sits on your clothes. It sits on your skin. It's absorbed through your skin. So exactly. Um, so the third one is property. You know, you could be living in a very kind of sick building syndrome. You're next to electrical pylons. It led to magnetic fields, Wi-Fi, the list goes on. You know, there's even all these chemicals sprayed on fire retardant things on your sofas and stuff in your in your paint. So again, you know, you get women to really have a look at what's in and around in their environment, in their property as well, surrounding property. And the la- the first three I say are fairly easy. And I say that kind of tentatively because obviously any for any changes to happen in health, you require lifestyle changes. There's got to be changes needed in some some degree or another. But it's the last two. And being a med- medically intuitive healer, you'll get this, is the last two are people and past. Mm-hmm. And it's the kind of these, uh, the, I, I talk about people because, again, oh my goodness, how many toxic people are there out there in the world that are all self-obsessed, self-focused uh, will throw you under a bus, you know, to get their way and things like that. So how to uh, a identify them and then how to navigate and manage them in a way that you can kind of push them out to the periphery or you can choose whether to do slow contact or no contact and noticing how it affects your nervous system and all these kind of things. And then the past equally you know, what has maybe happened in the past that perhaps you haven't viewed or even considered it to be either a small T trauma or a large T trauma, because everybody's slightly different. We're all very much in the Western world kind of have this, you know, let's just keep cracking on that stiff upper lip and, you know, and uh, positive thinking, which has its place. But if you haven't processed what is deeply suppressed in the subconscious, it still plays out in your nervous system, digestive system, hormonal systems, all these systems that you know are, are triggered by sight, by sound, by smell. And sometimes these things can be so subconscious and unconscious that you know I recommend a very, very simple tool like morning journaling to really start to increase your awareness. I, I believe if you're aware and you become awake, then you're halfway to identifying what these poisons might be to take that power and control. I mean, if I put, I don't know, was it nine different main medical conditions over and above endometriosis, 
intermission. I have none of them now. And it was using these five P's as process that I abide by now. Fabulous, fabulous information, Wendy Laidlaw. And I want to go back to what you were saying about your property. Here at mm. the Natural Healing Show, we've done shows about organic gardening. Mm. I'm a little garden club. There's probably 28 members. My garden has been organic, you know, for, I don't know, 28 years. However, in this garden club, it's shocking to me how many members have gotten cancer because of all the chemicals they're actually using in their garden. And they think, oh, I'm doing something really healthy. I'm out there gardening. And yet it's, what are you putting on your garden or what are you not putting on the garden? And yeah, it's a really good I, point, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I have an absolutely drop dead gorgeous garden and there's no toxic chemicals in it. Amazing. Now, Wendy Laidlaw, can endometriosis affect a woman's fertility? Absolutely. Yeah, I was told I would never have any children because endometrial deposits can maybe attach themselves to the fallopian tubes or the ovaries and cause cysts and things like that. They can interfere with your uh, fertility. And a lot of women maybe don't necessarily make the connection between infertility and endometriosis. Because sometimes endometrial deposits, even if uh, women do get surgery, you have to have a very trained eye to be able to identify them. So a lot of women go through IVF treatments and things like that or gone through you know decades of trying to get pregnant. Uh, I'm very pleased and proud to say that we've had uh, 26 what we call endoboss babies because the women that come through my programs are referred to as bosses of their endometriosis and endoboss. So we've had women who were told, like myself, I've got two children now mm. and, I and they're nine years apart. And I was told I would never have children. So I want to say to those who are listening, if you've been told you'll never have kids, well, if I can have two and then it's possible. But it does, it can affect it. And again, Addressing the five Ps can really make a big difference to how your body can, you know, uh, get pregnant and maintain the pregnancy. Because it's one thing falling pregnant. It's another thing, again, keep making sure your hormone levels, your progesterone, things like that, you know, are up to a certain level. They can actually maintain a pregnancy to its full as well. Now, here we are at the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. So, Wendy Laidlaw, what is the difference between the way that traditional medicine, Western medicine treats endometriosis and the way that natural healing treats endometriosis. Like if I went to a, do a medical doctor and I had endometriosis, what would the doctors likely tell me to do? Well, I think that again, the doctors are just a byproduct of their training. So the training establishments train doctors in pharmaceuticals and drugs and surgery. So you, by the time a woman does tend to go to see a doctor, she's probably been suffering decades, you know, because women tend to put up with a lot of pain and think that pain with a period is normal, which it's not, by the way. But by the time you go and see a doctor, the doctor, if, I mean, I know in the UK, doctors only get two weeks of training in gynecology in their general medical field, which is just shocking, given like the percentages of women in our population. But they're going to put, you know, women on drugs uh, or painkillers. And then by the time they're maybe referred to a gynecologist, uh, then the, the gynecologist is trained to in, in surgical procedures. So that tends to be, and of course, the problem with that, the challenge with that is they're not getting to the root cause. They're just merely trying to, in verticomas, manage symptoms. And of course, not actually get to the root cause of why these symptoms are surfacing in the first place. So if a woman went to a medical doctor, what sort of surgical procedures would a doctor typically recommend? Well, at, at this point, um, it used to be a laparotomy in, in my days, and I had six laparoscopies on top of that as well. So it would be a, a laparoscopy. I mean, I went down the mainstream medical route thinking that's what you did. I didn't know any difference. So hence why I now do what I do. And I'm saying to women, there is another way. So this, the, the obviously the gynecologists are trained to cut open women, but it's going to be a very invasive procedure when you're moving the you know, intestines around and the bladder around and the, you know, the ovaries and whatever in to, to burn off or lacerate any endometrial deposits or remove any cysts. There's just horror stories galore that we tend to hear, you know, of the side effects and things and the mistakes, you know, the slip of a hand and things like that. They've even got robotic arms now. It's Da Vinci robots, like having a surgical procedure by Robocop. I mean, it just, you know, just defies belief. So, but again, women don't know what they don't know. And this is why it's important for women like us to share with other women 
that there are other options so that they, you know, because invariably, uh, again, here in the UK, a lot of gynecologists are men. They've never even had a period, you know, so they're just, they're just a byproduct of their training. They get recommended to have laparoscopies, which again, can be quite invasive. But again, in average, I think on the analysis that I've done is about six to eight weeks before the symptoms and things all come back, the cysts and things like that. So it's merely just trying to manage symptoms at best. And going back to what a woman might experience. So a woman who has trouble with fertility could potentially have endometriosis. Can endometriosis cause severe period pain? Absolutely. I mean, again, it's interesting as I was brought up to believe that pain with a period was normal. That's just being a woman, dear. That's what my granny said. That's what my great granny said. That's what my mom said. That's just part of being a woman. But when you consider the fact that now I have zero pain, zero signs, zero symptoms, nothing, all my clients do the same, you're lucky if you have a two to three day period and it's a non-event. I love it when my clients go, it just kind of crept up in me and I, I didn't even know it was coming. Whereas normally with painful periods, you know, probably your half of your month is in pain of some sorts or you're flooding or you're clotting or you're, you know, you're, you're cramping or they're just a whole host of pain that women are living in so I think when women recognize from the very beginning that pain is not normal that is your body's way it's trying to communicate to you in some way shape or form um then that kind of shifts the perspective I think as I said earlier a lot of women just put up and shut up with the pain and they think that's normal so by the time they do reach out they're being you know drained and pained for probably a, a good number of years And with that, let's take a break and listen to a message from from one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author, and we'll hear more from Wendy Laidlaw about how to heal endometriosis naturally. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Wendy Laidlaw, author of How I Ended My Endometriosis Naturally Without Painkillers, Drugs, or Surgery. As a medical intuitive healer, when I'm working with someone with endometriosis, literally the first place that I'm going to start is by changing their diet. How does a pro-inflammatory diet contribute to endometriosis and how, in your opinion, do women need to eat in order to heal endometriosis? Well, I think a pro-inflammatory diet does what it says on the tin, you know, Mm -hmm. and again, I'm sure you know this, a lot of clients you work with, they don't know what they don't know. So our job is to get them in the know and trying to make these changes very slowly very succinctly so that they not only just like going to the gym for a couple of weeks and expecting to be kind of Miss Universe, but making these dietal changes so it becomes easy and it becomes part of their everyday lifestyle. So again, you know, the, 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 there's so many uh, foods like we talked about with wheat and sugar and soy and things like that are inflammatory. Um, you know, what I do with our clients is I get them to start note- writing down what they're eating, you know, and slowly help identify Because I think once it's written down, it's really easy for clients to recognize immediately, oh, I ate that and then I had pain or I ate that and I was constipated or ate that or I had, you know, upset stomach, all these different things. So it's so from a a dietal perspective, it's really important. What I normally try and again, you'll know this is very few people are eating enough protein as well. You know, we need protein. There's amino acids to help regenerate and repair the body cells. Mm. So I get a woman to have what I call power shakes you know, have them in the morning. So they're having pea and rice protein powders, multivitamin, macro greens, because again, you know, a lot of people because they maybe got, they've been having a lot of inflammatory foods, their digestive system's impaired as well. So they're not actually absorbing any nutrients and they're nutritionally deprived of what they need. So that's the main thing. And then just keeping a record of what they're eating really you know wheat is a big no-no with me that's the big number one no-no and we can we can get clients over that and they get a reduction in pain like we just talked about they're not having painful bowel movements they're able to have a reduction in pain and then eventually zero pain all the while we're just 
checking and tuning in. I mean, obviously we know what the main uh, inflammatory factors are, but what I found in experience is you can't say to somebody, swap everything out because they just feel sad and down and depressed. It's just little by little, little becomes a lot, as the Tasmanian proverb said. And then they start to really notice and pay attention. Wendy Laidlaw, you and I are in 100% agreement. <laughs> I think we, we, the way that it's raised in the, US, in the U.S. and the Western society is just the devil as far as aggravating pain. So mm -hmm. here's the way I explain it. So I came up with this saying, because I, 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 you know, you have to ha say things in a way that people remember. So I, I came up with a saying, which is nobody in their right mind eats cats. Nobody in their right mind needs cats. What are cats? Caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, sugar. Caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, sugar are all pro-inflammatory foods. And then what I call friends of cats, fried foods and gluten. And just like regular cats, if you think you're in charge of a cat, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. And it's sort of funny because when you get the cats out of your diet, you feel better. You're, you know, people tell me I eat less the way that you tell me to eat and I'm not hungry, right? Yeah. Whereas when I eat my other way, I, and, and so anyway, so reduce or eliminate the cats and then you want to eat an anti-inflammatory diet. So this is going to be your fruits and vegetables and your clean, pure water. And another thing that Wendy hasn't mentioned, but I'm sure you will agree, is microwave. When you microwave, it's a disaster. Throw it in the trash. Exactly. <laughs> We, no, we are like, no, we don't, I don't have a microwave in my home. None of my clients do. I, again, when you, I'm sure, you, you know, you, when you start to learn about this, you're shocked that governments, that societies are, are, you know, pumped with all this information about things and we aren't told. And once you wake up and become aware of this, you make the changes because you, you're frightened not to. Yes. And I have to admit, I have, I own a microwave and I use it for one purpose, which is to heat up my neck warmers in the evening. <laughs> so I heat up my neck warmers and put them around my neck and, and then I feel cozy. But yeah. why, why is microwaving so terrible for you? So every cell that's alive spins clockwise, okay? When you microwave food, and I've even had clients, they go to the store, they spend gobs of money buying organic food, and then they come home and microwave it. I'm like, oh no, oh no. Yeah. When you microwave the food, it reverses the spin of the molecule and that drives toxins deeper into the cells. It basically mm. sets you up for cancer. Yeah. So you want to reduce or eliminate the cats, throw away your microwave, unless you're like me and use it for your neck warmers <laughs> and increase your uh, fruits and vegetables and you know, and drink more pure water. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I point out to my endometriosis closest clients, or literally any woman who's got period pain or you know pain in their, her female area, is that your digestive organs are literally right next door to your female organs. Mm. And so, if you've got inflammation in your digestive tract, that's going to affect your whole female system. Mm, absolutely. Right? Well, I mean, that's interesting, isn't it? Because some people can buy organic, as you say, but they don't have enough, uh, their digestive system so impaired from antibiotics and painkillers and drugs and stuff and all these other inflammatory, pro-inflammatory pro foods that they're not actually absorbing and digesting the foods that they're able to put in. So that's one of the first things we look at is uh, get a, a lovely, simple home test, which is a baking soda test, you know, just to test how quickly they burp. Have they got enough stomach acid to break down the pathogens and the bacteria that are coming into their body and to help obviously the plumbing system remove and expel any waste out as quickly as possible, but also to absorb the nutrients that are coming in as well. And um, I will teach everyone, there is a real simple way you can test to see if you have enough stomach acid, all right? Now I'm teaching both on video and audio. So I'm gonna demonstrate it for my video folks and tell, discuss it with your audio folks. So on the left side of your body, if you go straight down from your nipple and both men and women have nipples, and then you go in on the ribs, there's an acupressure point, okay? And you wanna look, test both the right and the left side. Now on the, 
right side, if you go straight down from your nipple inside and you rub that point, if that point is tender, that is an indication your body is deficient in hydrochloric acid. And you compare it to the same point on the left side, okay? So if that right point, you go straight down from the nipple into the ribs, on the edge of the ribs, and you rub that point, if that's tender, your body is probably deficient in hydrochloric acid. HCL is so critical because if you're not producing enough HCL, you're not breaking down your protein, number one. And number two, you're not killing off bad bacteria such as H. pylori, which is a class one carcinogen that causes ulcers. And number three, you're not producing enough stomach acid and you may have systemic candida, systemic yeast infections, right? Yeah. So, but tell us, you use a baking soda test for stomach acid. How does the baking soda test use work? Well, it's quite, it's quite fun, really. Well, for the candida test, we, I get my clients just to spit in a glass of, of water in the morning before they've drunk and eaten anything and just see if there's any strings hanging down. And then for the, the baking soda test, the test, you know, is how quickly you put a teaspoonful into a glass of water, drink uh, the baking soda in the water, and then you, you time your watch as to how quickly you burp. You're, you're supposed to burp straight away. And that means you've got enough acid. We're supposed to have enough stomach acid to dissolve a razor blade. I mean, I don't know who, I hope nobody tested that internally. And it was just done in a lab, but we're supposed to have enough stomach acid. And of course, the problem is that these days we don't, but the baking soda test. And of course, if, if you're burping, I mean, some women just don't burp at all. And again, you know, that's where obviously either digestive enzymes with a little bit, bit of betaine uh, hydrochloric and or supplementation with betaine hydrochloric as well. And again, over time, it's amazing how quickly their body can rebalance and, you know, re start to regenerate the acid that it needs to do the digestion. And of course, that helps the whole plumbing system. They have regular bowel movements. They're not constipated anymore. All these sort of things. So so that's quite a fun wee test to do at home. So Wendy Laidlaw, from your years of experience helping women heal endometriosis naturally, you've developed what you call the laid low protocols. Can mm -hmm. you give us an overview? What are the laid low protocols for healing endometriosis naturally? Sure. Well, the laid low protocols are a combination of the five Ps. So looking at the produce, products, property, people, and past, and also incorporating what I call the three daily basics. And I think these are the core foundational elements, which is the, the number one uh, is journaling in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the person that knows you the best is you. It doesn't matter who it is, what coat they have, what numbers they have after their, you know, their name. It's, it's learning to trust your inner, inner instincts, your inner intuition, uh, connecting with yourself and how do you do that. It's really challenging in this day and age with all this pressure and noise out there. So the first daily basic is to, as you wake up in the morning, you're still like not fully conscious yet. You're still able to tap into the subconscious elements of your of your brain. And that allows you just to, to hear other, what I refer to as parts of you, other psychological parts who, you know, different parts of, of your brain as well, your subconscious elements, and just do your flow of thought. You know, like, oh, that bin man annoyed me yesterday. Oh, I really need to get the, you know, the cat, some cat litter or whatever it is, or, oh, I didn't sleep very well, or I had an amazing sleep, just literally a flow of thought. And it's three A4 pages, just of kind of like a brain dump, really. And what that does is it not only allows you to sort of tap into kind of deep elements that may be kind of lurking there that you weren't even aware of, but it allows you to free yourself up for the day you know, and actually get a, a, a clear head. So that's number one. Number two is your power shake, making sure that second, you know, as soon as you've done your journaling, you have your power shake. Two tablespoonfuls, one, one tablespoonful of rice protein, one of pea protein gives you that nice balance of amino acids, macrogreens, multivitamin and minerals. And then, you know, you can, some women, you know, as they're moving through, they'll add in, you know, have green juices mixed in with that and things as well. So they're really setting themselves up with everything that they need for the day. And I'm going to interject because a big mistake that I see with so many women with power shakes is they use soy protein. Oh my goodness! Like, exactly. Oh, and again, when we're not saying soy or whey, no, no whey and no soy because they're very inflammatory. Yeah. Yeah. So, and one of the things again that I explain in the U.S., soy is not even treated like a food crop. And mm. so it gets sprayed with everything. And most of the soy proteins are 
you know, used from or created from the byproducts of soy oil processing. So again, Wendy Laidlaw and I are both so agreeing. So, um, and it's going to disrupt your estrogen. I told him, I only do soy protein shakes if you want fibroids and fat thighs. Go for it if you want to. Otherwise, don't do it. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's the thing, isn't it? And it's such a shame. There's so many mixed messages and it's the people who shout the loudest that tend to get heard. And, you know, we're, and it's not for lack of information these days, is it? There's a wash. I mean, billions of trillions of pieces of information. But obviously what we're bringing are the pieces of information that work to get results for women with endometriosis. And that's key. It's it's sifting out what is just pressure and noise. And, and this is where it's a big thing for me is to help women to connect to them, their themselves, their body, their emotions, because I'm just a guide, you know, to help them come back to themselves. I'm not here to dictate. I'll guide, I'll make suggestions and things. Um, but it's really important for the woman to understand herself, you know, and that I think is the greatest gift because when we part ways, I know I get I get emails and messages years later that they're still in remission and they've had another baby and things like that. So that's where the, because, you know, that's what we're here to do is to help people make these, not only the initial changes, which can be challenging, but, you know, set it up so that it becomes easy for for life. So the three daily basics, journaling, a power shake, rice-based protein, not soy, not whey. And what's the third daily basic? What I call a power nap, meditation, rest, relaxation in the afternoon. And it's very different because a lot of people do meditation things in the morning, which is awesome. But if you think like our, our mobile phones, our batteries drain in our mobile phones with usage. It's the same with our cells. So, um, you know, uh, what I suggest is kind of like after lunch, maybe two to three o'clock in the afternoon, people just either go and sit on park bench, ideally lie down on their bed if, they, if they're working from home, just turn everything off, put eye mask on, put bilateral, um, uh, uh, binaural beats, uh, like, Kelly Howell's an amazing, she's got a whole range of beautiful meditation guided, just music and stuff. And it is amazing how that, what that can do for the body. It's like literally plugging the body into an electrical socket and charging it. Now, depending on how ill women are or, you know, what's been showing up in their body normally determines how long I recommend they do it in the afternoon. And especially if women are in chronic pain and they're not sleeping at night. So I would say minimum kind of 30, start off with 15 minutes, then be, Tangress to 30 and ideally do like an hour and you'll be able to get so much more from your body for, from a prolonged period of time I mean I, that all these things by the way I still do to this day you know after we've had our call I'll go and do meditation before my next call so that I can be you know really charged it's kind of like respecting our bodies because we want to get so much from our bodies and our minds and our emotions these days but if we're not taking care of it then it starts to scream and show up signs and symptoms so journaling power shake meditation these are the core foundational level basics that sustain the kind of lifestyle and the changes that we want to make beautiful information and wendy laidlaw i really agree with you especially on that afternoon nap mm. one of my 10 books is called unlimited energy now and it's all about how to rebuild after a burnout and yeah. when you've had made potentially decades of pain from endometriosis, your adrenals mm. are burned out. You, yes. When you're in pain, your body's secreting all those stress hormones. Mm. So you're mentally and physically and energetically depleted. Yep. And pushing yourself doesn't work. The, um, the adrenal glands make a major downshift about between three or four in the afternoon. Mm. I always joke, the British people have it all figured out because they drink caffeine and eat sugar <laughs> for tea, yeah. right? Yeah. But a better way, now that you know that caffeine and sugar are pro-inflammatory, mm. is to take a power nap or meditate. I love that suggestion. <laughs> and even better if you can get out in the sun and lie on the grass and, you know, really get connect with nature and, and, and do that as well. Of course, it's not so easy in Scotland, I may add. <laughs> And with that, let's take another break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. We're listening to Wendy Laidlaw, author of How I End Ended Endometriosis Naturally. Radio. UK Health Radio. 
the station that makes you feel good. that makes you feel good. So Wendy Laidlaw, you teach women how to heal endometriosis naturally. In my work as a medical intuitive healer, I always talk about every disease happening on all five levels, the spiritual, mental, emotional, energetic, and physical. So there's no illness, it only happens on the physical level. In your opinion, what is the spiritual message behind endometriosis? I love that question. I think you're absolutely right. And I think it's such a shame that more of the mainstream medical don't even aren't even trained in that, even to tune into that. I think the spiritual element is invariably, well, if you think of dis, uh, disease, it's dis ease you know there's disease going on on the energetic levels on 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 on, as i'm saying subconsciously there'll be perhaps conditioning or uh, trying to conform or trying to be different than who you are at your core in your soul and this is where again with the women we work with it really is about helping them connect to their their authentic self their true soul their true light what they were born that they had to hide and suppress if you think of endometriosis it's the heart of the south you know, they, invariably their true selves have been shoved down and they've conformed and they've adapted and adopted to their environment and their culture. And this is where, again, you know, with some of the work from the spiritual side, it's really about connecting to our different parts. We have lots of different parts of us. You know what I mean? Is like our little us, our adolescence, our adult, higher power, whatever you want to call it. There's all these different parts within us that our working part, our mother part, our girlfriend part, or, you know, we have all these parts and they have different needs, different wants and different roles. So from a spiritual perspective, it's about a lot of these parts are fragmented, you know, and what we're trying to do is really integrate them or to hear them, first of all, so identify them, hear them, and then integrate them. And then, and then become this whole person, not seeking externally to be filled up by a job or money or a material thing or a partner, but to be whole as a person and whole with your soul, you know, because if you can, if you can identify the parts, you know, then you're, then you, you become whole. And that's what most people I think in their soul are seeking. And that's why disease tends to show up from a spiritual perspective is they're, they're, they're detached and, and, and disconnected from what their soul's purpose is, in my opinion. Great information. I'm going to share some additional insights from my work as a medical intuitive healer. So in your body, you have energy centers called chakras. The second chakra, which is basically below your belly button, which is the area that gets affected energetically by endometriosis, that center is where we're supposed to balance our sexuality and our power. And Mm -hmm. sometimes women cut off their sexuality by trying to be too powerful, or they shut off their power by trying to be too sexual. So it's really about finding a balance between our personal power and our sexuality. Secondly, in my humble opinion, not that I know anything, and I'm going to be completely politically incorrect, women are not just human beings who menstruate. Mm. And we live in a culture that is very misogynistic, right? And, you know, we think, oh, things are so much better than they were 100 years ago. In some ways, yes, right? But so many women are trained to survive in our culture by acting like men. And mm. when you act like, as, as a woman, when you act like a man and you run on adrenaline, you're going to deplete yourself so completely. So I think part of what we have to do when we're wanting to heal our endometriosis, in addition to all the great information, Wendy Laidlaw has put together in her protocols is to really deeply honor your femininity and deeply honor the divine feminine. And remember that the world needs yin energy, right? There's yang and there's yin, (laughs) right? And all human beings have yang and yin energy. But when we really honor our divine feminine and really honor who we are as women, 
then we can come into our power and balance our power and our sexuality naturally. And I think that's that's where the people and past are very important of the peas because if you've grown up in a very dominating dogma, uh, dogmatic, narcissistic, misogynistic family, for example, you learn to be passive and you learn to be a people pleaser, you know? So again, and what I found a lot of women with endometriosis, they have this fire, they have this strength, but they've had to suppress it. And it's how to get them comfortable with putting boundaries in, for example. They don't even know what a boundary is. You know, because they're having to navigate, you know, the, the toxicity that's around them. So I completely agree. It's it's absolutely finding their voice, but it's how and why have they lost their voice in the first place or not even found it. You know, people say, oh, you lost your voice. They didn't even have it, you know, <laughs> and it's and and then the, and it's what people tend to do is they split to the other side. So it's, you know, suppression to aggression. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for balance where they can be assertive rather than aggressive you know and there are the means suppressed that they can be you know they can they can suss out and smell the toxicity and have the tools in which to protect themselves because for women to uh, come to the forefront for women to be successful they need to have a good connection to self you know like an oak tree you know they're so rooted and grounded into the ground and they have the strong core so that they can bear fruit and and, and everything else and there might be winds and there might be you know lightning hit their tree but they're so strong in their sense of identity and who they are that it doesn't matter what anyone else is thinking or saying because they're allowed to say and do whatever they want but as a woman they can show up in the world authentic true to themselves and know what they think and feel not what they feel that they should do to keep other people happy great information and one of the ways that i encourage women to connect to their divine feminine self is to journal i agree with Wendy Laidlaw, journaling is such a powerful tool to spend some time journaling about what your divine feminine self actually needs. Mm. Now, when you grow up in a neglectful or traumatic or abusive household, people get accustomed to neglecting your needs. The only way to be happy in life is by meeting your needs or having your needs met. And there's a difference between a need and a want. I may want to go to Paris, but if I don't go to Paris, I'm still going to be okay. But I need enough sleep. I need spiritual family and spiritual companionship. So really tuning into what are the true needs of your divine feminine self. Mm -hmm. And as you learn to nurture nurture your divine feminine self then you will not need to create illness in that particular area of your body i mean i think uh you know i think it's 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 important to say that n nobody consciously creates illness disease comes up because of what is deeply in, in the subconscious and i know in my own journey i didn't have a clue what my needs were except for to keep everybody happy in my life and i had so many balls juggling i thought that was what i had to do and that's what we're learning to separate from you know what are your thoughts feelings and needs of all your different parts because you have different parts within you of which to identify now, Wendy Wadelaw, as you know, so many people, when they think of natural healing, they think about herbs and natural healing remedies. Are there any particular herbs or natural healing? I mean, you and I agree that you have to start with the big picture first, that everything mm -hmm. in your protocol. But in addition to this Laidlaw protocol, are there any herbs or natural healing remedies that you recommend for endometriosis? Yeah, I mean, I've listed them all in my book, but I think there's there's two main ones that I would recommend to women, especially for inflammation. Um, and interestingly enough, in the UK and Europe, they've it's just been um, how how have they classed it? Not banned, but they've removed it for sale, but then introduced it into the medical uh, centres, which I won't get on my soapbox about, but you can still get it in 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 the USA. But it's called serapeptase which is a, a wonderful natural inflammatory that, it, you know, that uh, works with the body to help reduce inflammation, irritation, especially in the intestinal tract, but also things like cysts and ad adhesions that can come from surgical procedures. 
um and it's is wonderful at you know re re reducing inflammation another one is dim and it's kind of the extracts you know from from your coriferous vegetables and things uh, and again you know we're still okay here in the uk to get it but it's a wonderful uh, it helps to metabolize any excess estrogen or the estradiol the the, the kind of in inverted commas the bad estrogen and helps to balance the good estrogens again as well so these are the two main ones um, I would I suggest that with any woman, if she's got endometriosis, lots of irritation, inflammation or in pain to start super slowly. That's the biggest challenge is, uh, you know, if you're anything like me, I started to zoom, you know, take everything and I didn't know what was working and what wasn't working. So the, 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 the mantra I use is slow is fast. So when you're introducing anything like that, you do so very slowly at a time over a couple of days see how your body responds how how's your body feeling to this before you introduce anything else so don't go rushing off and into and start taking these supplements and millions of other ones you really want to try and rest your digestive system as much as possible swapping as you're saying the big pictures looking at your food what's coming in on and around your body and then things like serapeptes are wonderful i mean they're i think in germany and in japan they've been using serapeptes in the medical realm for about 35 years so there's loads of documented studies on it there's another great supplement called myomin again lots of documented studies clinical trials validating its effectiveness for reducing fibroids and cysts uh, but don't go rushing out and just take all these things at once just start slowly introducing these things and again i agree with you about serapeptase and dim and there's some other natural things you can do. Uh, turmeric is wonderful for anti-inflammatory and you can include it in your cooking. You wanna be careful you don't take too much at one time. I've done that. Mm -hmm. uh, also omega-3 fish oils are naturally anti-inflammatory, right? So those are things and um, ground flaxseed. And I always talk about the difference between ground and whole. So ground flaxseed is gonna be a little bit easier on your digestive system. Ground mm. flaxseed will pull bad estrogens out of your body. And I, I find with the women I work with that uh, flaxseeds are too inflammatory, even when they're ground. So we, we actually remove them completely. Once they're out of pain, if they want to experiment a little bit, fine. But, it, you know, for a good year, we remove things. It's just too abrasive. It just causes all, I think because their bodies have only had the painkillers, drugs, antibiotics, in yeah. my experience, to be fair, by the women, by the time women reach out to me, they're in a really bad way. So we actually don't recommend flax seeds at all from our end. Yeah. So again, you've got to know where you're at. And as you say, yeah. once you're out of pain, flax seeds actually are scientifically pull, proven to pull bad estrogens out of the body. So, so Wendy Laidlaw, thank you for your wonderful information and your contributions to women with endometriosis. Any final thoughts for our audience? I think wherever you are on your journey, just never give up. You know, it's never really a straight road. And I always say it's not an easy journey to put this condition into remission. It's complex. The condition is complex by nature. And there's all these probably other signs, symptoms, conditions and diseases as well as. So just take, do one day at a time. Focus on one thing at a time. Recognize you're in for the long haul. But you can do it. If I can come back from being totally bedridden for two and a half years near total organ failure with like nine different diseases that I was told I was going to die from, mm. if I can come back from there and be as healthy as I am now, I've helped over 100 women personally, uh, tens of thousands. I'm a number one bestseller three times in the USA and UK with my books, you know, other women are getting these results too, then they can as well. But just, you know, it's managing the expectations is really important. Be super kind to yourself. Track your progress. It's going to be slow. We're in a world of quick fix. We're all guilty of looking for that quick fix. But it, it doesn't happen quickly. It takes time. But the body can respond super quickly in, in relative terms. So give yourself at least three to six months to expect to see the changes or start to feel changes. But just to never, ever, ever give up, as Winston Churchill would have said. You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. Uh, while you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. 
And you can listen to The Natural Healing Show on UK Health Radio all over the world, wherever podcasts are available. Our guest today is Wendy, Wendy Laidlaw, author of How I Ended My Endometriosis Naturally Without Painkillers, Drugs, or Surgery. You can find out more about Wendy Laidlaw and her wonderful work at healendometriosisnaturally.com. And remember, if you are suffering from endometriosis, you can heal yourself naturally. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Natural Healing Show. Keep it natural with the Natural Healing Show.